Hello there. So when you think of the formation of the Apple company, there are two names which really spring to mind for most people, Steve Wozniak and, Bill Ga and Steve Jobs. But it may surprise you to learn that actually there is a third person who was key to the formation of the Apple company. And that man is called Ronald Wayne. So I've been watching a lot of videos about Apple on YouTube and I happen to look at the Wikipedia page because it's a pastime of mine. Whatever I'm doing, I always end up on Wikipedia reading about it. I'm sure I can't be the only person. So I scroll down and uh, all the useful Apple facts, like it used to be called the Apple Computer Company and then it was called Apple Computer Inc. Founded on April the 1st, 1976. So it was technically an April Fool's joke. Um, founders, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne. Ha am I the only person who's missed that Apple was actually formed by three people? This chap's story is very, very interesting. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this guy's journey with Apple, the twists and turns in this chap's involvement with Apple. If you've done the opposite of what Ronald Wayne told you to do, um, you'd kind of be on a really good path to success. So what was Ronald Wayne's involvement with the Apple company? Well, he was there right at the beginning with Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, and he helped them actually set up the original Apple company. So setting up a company isn't straightforward. There are things you have to do, administrative things and uh, kind of businessy things that I don't really understand, and I don't understand them because you're supposed to get somebody who knows what they're talking about. And Ronald Wayne was somebody who knew what he was talking about when it came to setting up a company. A businessman with knowledge of the electronics industry, so he was well placed to help them out, and he did. And Ronald Wayne's involvement wasn't just about setting up the business, it was also acting as a sort of third vote. So Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak owned 45% of the Apple company each. And in the case of a kind of disagreement between Jobs and Wozniak, it would give Wayne the opportunity to cast the deciding vote. So, you know, he had quite a pivotal role. And for that, he received a 10% stake in the Apple company. Absolutely fantastic. And then the first of a string of unfortunate events occurred. So Ronald Wayne, 12 days later, sold his 10% stake in the Apple company back to Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak for the grand total of $800. But it's not all bad news because a year later he got a settlement to stop him from making any claims in future, demanding any more money from the Apple company. And for that, he received the grand total of $1,500. So that's $2,300 in total for a 10% share in the Apple company. Now, Wayne has since said that his passion didn't lie in the electronics companies like that. And he felt as if Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were kind of giants in their field and he felt a little bit maybe not worthy of working with them, perhaps couldn't keep up with them and it wasn't really his kind of personal passion. He was more interested in slot machine companies and things like that, which is kind of fair enough. But it's got to be, you know, a tiny bit disappointing that he sold a 10% share in the Apple company for $2,300 when by some estimates that would actually be worth several billion pounds today. In fairness to Wayne, when he was kind of asked about this, he did say that he didn't regret it because all he could go on at that time was the information he had available to him. So it's very easy for us now to look back and think, what an idiot, he sold a 10% stake in the Apple company. Couldn't he see what a fantastic company this was gonna be? Well, you know, as brilliant as Jobs and Wozniak are, it was essentially a kind of slightly more professional hobbyist electronics company, wasn't it? So it may have not been that easy to see that it was going to become an international multi-billion dollar company. And Wayne had had some other business kind of problems and unfortunate circumstances. So he was a little bit apprehensive about going down another kind of uncertain route and potentially losing a load more money. So at the time, based on the information he had available to him, 
he thought he made the right decision. And in fairness to Wayne, uh, he doesn't seem that bothered uh, about losing out on billions of dollars. Good on him, because uh, yeah, I think that would probably eat me alive. It's like having a winning lottery ticket, putting it in a washing machine, and then it gets destroyed. My word, it's unimaginable. Believe it or not, uh, Wayne's unfortunate set of circumstances doesn't end there, and it actually gets more unbelievable than that. Really, this guy's string of bad luck is just, I mean, I don't know what he was in a previous life, but he needs to kind of not go anywhere and he needs to lock the door so that he can remain safe. Like all of us, incidentally, in the current climate. It seems as if Ronald Wayne had a number of interesting hobbies. For example, he ran a stamp shop for a while. Um, and incidentally, the logo that he designed for that stamp shop was very similar to the original logo that he designed for the Apple company. Now, obviously, because Wayne had worked at the original Apple company, he had documentation relevant to setting up that company. And in particular, he had his contract, which would have been signed by him, Wozniak and Jobs. And maybe, you know, he wanted to just get rid of it, didn't want the memories, or maybe he wanted a bit of cash. So he sold it in the 90s. And he sold it for the grand total of $500, which, you know, is cheap for something with the signatures of some of the biggest people in the computing industry and indeed linking you to that era. So maybe he was happy with that. Maybe he bought a load of stamps with it. We'll never know unless we ask him, in which case we will know. Unfortunately for Wayne, um, in 2011, that contract sold again. It went to auction and uh, sold for $1.6 million. So I guess he kind of lost out again. I mean, that has really got to sting, hasn't it? Now, in fairness to Jobs, who realized that Wayne had not done so well out of Apple as he had, he did try and get him back to the Apple company, um, tried to lure him back, and no doubt, had he gone back, he would have at least received, you know, some reasonable compensation for his involvement. And this is quite a common theme. So for example, the original drummer of the Beatles, Pete Best, uh, he obviously was replaced by Ringo Starr and Ringo Starr was a lot more um, famous from the Beatles and made a lot more money from the Beatles. Well, I believe Paul McCartney actually ensured that Pete Best made, you know, enough cash to survive, basically, from his involvement in the Beatles. There's a history of people, you know, with a kind of conscience, looking after people that have had a series of bad luck. But Wayne wasn't having any of this. He clearly was more interested in stamps and slot machines and didn't go back to Apple. You know, you could argue that he was following his dreams, but he really lost out as a result of making those choices. Now, the end of, well, he's not dead, so it's not the end of his story, but the development of Wayne's story is, you know, as I said, continues to be a little bit sad. So he is retired now, but he actually retired in a trailer park in America. Now, my understanding of American culture is that trailer parks are the kind of lower end of accommodation in America, probably one up from being homeless. I don't know, you'd have to correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, he's not doing great for himself and he's selling coins and probably collecting stamps still. But whatever the situation, I hope he's happy. Um, and, you know, I hope he appreciates that just like in the Baz Luhrmann song, everybody's choices are half chances. He went on the information that was available to him at the time and it's only now in retrospect that it was a series of unfortunate decisions, unless you really are interested in uh, collecting coins and stamps. But you could buy a lot of coins and stamps with $1.6 million. Anyway, had you heard of Ronald Wayne? What would you have done in his situation? Would you have sold your Apple shares for $800? Well, of course, you're all gonna say that you wouldn't have done, aren't you?
anyway. Thank you to all my Patreons who are scrolling down the screen now, and thank you also to Magnanimous Meg and George Foote who donate kindly 10 or more dollars a month, that's very kind of you, thank you very much. Do subscribe if you enjoy my videos, and I shall see you next time for another one.